Welcome to ITU Telecom World 2016 Bangkok, Thailand. I'm very pleased to be joined this morning by David Harmon, who is VP for Huawei Global Government Affairs. David, thanks so much indeed for being with us today. It's great to be here. Now, I'd like to start off by talking about broadband. It's a subject that's very close to uh, ITU's heart. Uh, what is the most important factor in advancing broadband deployment, in your opinion? Well, the fact of the matter is that uh, last year the United Nations uh, disclosed the figure that there are still 4.5 billion people in the world that do not have access to broadband. And when you think that there's 7 billion people living in the world, this is just simply an unacceptable figure. Uh, because access to broadband is now a key aspect to economic planning for governments around the world. So in fact, access to broadband is as important as access to utilities, access to water, ac access to electricity. So in fact, it's incumbent on us all, Huawei Technologies is part of this process, but this includes uh, representatives from the educational research and governments around the world uh, to bring forward initiatives to help bridge this digital divide, uh, a digital divide that exists in all countries in the world, but sadly one that exists in uh, more, some countries more than others. And what about the government's role in this? What should government's priority be and um, what's Huawei's priority in this? Well, if you look at uh, uh, findings from different multilateral bodies, whether it's the ITU itself or the World Bank, or International Monetary Fund, um, the OECD, uh, all of these bodies uh, have brought forward findings that demonstrate clearly that governments that invest in information communications technology, governments that invest in ICT, can deliver stronger economic returns from that investment. In fact, um, if there's a 10% increase in penetration levels uh, for broadband access, uh, a country's GDP can grow by up to 1%. So uh, ICT is now part of the economic process. It's not just an isolated policy, it's a policy that is intrinsic and an integral part of the development of key economic sectors in a country, whether in the field of transport, whether in the field of energy, whether in the field of health, whether in the field of education, the provision of social services. And what about Huawei's position on this? Well, Huawei, uh, as a company, we are a global leader in the field of wireless technology. So, for example, wireless technology has a key role to play in helping to bridge this digital divide and, uh, to, and in helping to bring forward these new services that can serve the needs uh, of uh, society, particularly, uh, in uh, particularly in areas where copper lines may be traditionally uh, weak. So, in fact, uh, the ITU Congress uh, is being held here in 2016. There are 10 billion connections in the world today. In 2025, there will be 100 billion connections in the world. And in fact, of those 100 billion connections, only 10% will be person to person. So uh, the mechanics of industry are going to be connected to the internet. Today, 99% of all sensors that are connected to manufacturing are not connected to the internet, but that's going to change. So Huawei is already forming partnerships uh, with key individual uh, companies and key vertical industries uh, from the transport, from the energy, from the, the power, smart city, safe city, financial services and media sectors, so that we're going to develop uh, new uh, ICT solutions for these vertical industries as these changes take place. And it's not just about a multiplicity of, cont uh, of, of connections, it's also to do with the speed of these connections because we are uh, on the verge of entering the 5G era. So, uh, for example, if you're driving a car at 120 kilometres an hour with a 4G capability and you seek to stop, it'll still take 40 milliseconds to stop. That's a couple of, me uh, a couple of metres. Uh, with a 5G capability, that'll take place in one millisecond. So with 5G, uh, a thousand devices can be connected in a 100 square meter radius. So 5G is going to have a very far reaching effect uh, for the transformation uh, of uh, how uh, key industries carry out their activities and indeed feed into government planning and the tackling of key broader uh, societal challenges. And what's next for Huawei in the region? With regard to this region here, oh, well of course, firstly, Huawei as a company, uh, last year we invested 15% of our revenues into basic research and science. Um, we employ 79,000 researchers and it's through the work of our researchers and scientists and through the international collaborations that they have that we are now devising new um, uh, solutions, products and 
processes. So Huawei has three uh, key businesses. One is supporting uh, telecom companies around the world where we provide technology solutions uh, to key uh, telecom companies, in fact 500 key telecom companies. So of course we want to uh, invest more and more into the era, era of 5G so that we can provide, um, uh, we can ensure the transmission of information and new services can take place in a speedier, uh, in a more secure and a more cost effective manner. Equally, uh, we're going to sell a minimum of 140 million handsets from our consumer division uh, globally, and we have a growing enterprise uh, division where we're providing technology solutions to uh, uh, governments and to industry alike. And finally, I'd just like to ask you, in terms of uh, this event, ITU Telecom World 2016, you've, you've um, certainly invested quite a bit of money in, 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 in time, I know, in, in being here. What's the value of attending events such as this? The ITU is a key body that sets international standards for evolving technologies. Setting standards uh, is putting in place the rules of engagement for companies that are involved in the field of mobile communications. So Huawei as a company, in fact, uh, we hold a variety of positions in over, uh, we hold over 300 positions in standard organizations around the world, and the ITU is a leading light in that context. So uh, it's very important that we have a presence here, and uh, Huawei as a company hold key positions on a variety of committees within the ITU, and we hope that's the case for a number of years to come. Well, thank you very much indeed for being with us in the studio today and wish you the very best uh, of luck for the future. Thanks very much. Guys.